Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dollar General, a Fortune 500 company with 15,000 stores in the United States. Now you may ask yourself why are we looking at the side of the building? Well that's because the sign didn't light up in the front of the building and the store not being in very good shape is going to kind of become a running theme throughout this video and trying to figure out how this store reached actually number 123 as of 2018 on the Fortune 500 because their stores are kind of a mess. Um, I did a video recently on the 99 cents only store and it's a very similar store to this, a discount store. And in that video, I was really surprised to find how brightly lit and clean the store was and how decent the products were and everything. Uh, Dollar General is kind of the complete opposite, but they don't seem to be having any trouble like the 99 cent only store is starting to experience and that's just strange to me. Now Dollar General has its roots all the way back to 1939 as a family owned company that started like as a general store company and then they went public in 1968 and really started to grow and then they were taken private in 2007 by a private equity firm. While they were private some house cleaning was done and then a few years later in 2009 they went public again and that leads us here to today where they've just been adding stores and distribution centers and all that ever since which like I said confuses me based upon the way the store looks. Dollar General carries a wide variety of products like most discount stores like groceries and health and beauty stuff like razors you know but the good news is you don't have to come here to get discount prices on razors like this you can visit this episode sponsor Patron Blades. Patron Blades is a monthly shaving blades club similar to a lot of the other ones I'm sure you've heard about on YouTube but it's even better. For one, the blades are better. I've tested them, and I know you've all seen my beard and how epic it is, but you've got to clean the edges up, you know, just to make sure you don't look like a complete barbarian. So like I said, I tested these blades out, and they're fantastic. And they're also very cheap discount prices, but the best part is, at least in my opinion, is that when you subscribe to Patron Blades, you can support your favorite YouTube content creators, like me. If you go to patronblades.com and use the sponsor code DEADMALL, or you can follow the link down in the description below, you can sign up for Patron Blades, and they will share some of the monthly profits with the Retail Archaeology channel, and you can help support us exploring some of the cool stuff that we do. It's cheap and easy to sign up, and it's super easy to quit whenever you want, so there's really no reason not to give them a try. But anyways, let's get back to exploring this really ratty Dollar General store. They do carry a lot of national brands in their grocery area, but a lot of the best deals it looks like are stuff that from this Clover Valley brand, which is their in-store house brand that they use. A lot of the grocery items though kind of seem to be scratch and dent or uh, close to expiration though. And you'll see here the aisles go like all the way up to the ceiling almost, which is the complete opposite of a lot of the other discount stores that I've been in. And it gives it a very claustrophobic feel. Here's their cheap kitchen appliance section, but the prices didn't seem any better here than they do at Walmart for comparable things. And I thought this was kind of funny. They have all the like Tide Pods and different kind of pod things uh, locked up there in a case, but I don't know if that's pre or post people eating those. And they do have a little small pet section as well, but again, this food seemed pretty close to expiration. And that old school price tag, that doesn't engender a lot of confidence there in the product. I don't know, I just don't think I would feed my uh, my pet stuff from here. But now you start to see some of the problems though, there's just products left on the floor. But all in all, this aisle is actually one of the, the better organized and in better shape aisles as we'll see here in a few minutes. Looks like uh, somebody just gave up. <laughs> There wasn't anybody around this uh, unattended basket here. A lot of the aisles look like this though. Now this is a mess. This is a tripping hazard. It looks like a thrift store. Actually, it looks worse than a thrift store. I've been in a lot of thrift stores that are actually very nicely organized. I think this is their clearance section, but this is still not acceptable for this amount of trash to be all over the place. Like this, this is just garbage right here. random things on the shelves. You can see too they have the uh, guides here, the, the planograms, how to set up the different displays that they should have. Here's some of their like generic Barbies, but there's some, some name brand Barbie in there as well it looks like. 
It looks like they're getting ready to switch stuff for the next season. Wonder if any of these air fresheners still have any any scent left to them. And this was interesting. Look, pacifiers and stuff next to the bug poison. I'm not sure if there's a if there's any code about you know how far you have to keep baby products away from things like raid, but there's a toothbrush right there too, a children's toothbrush that I God knows how old that is. It's Ice Age, uh, right next to some raid ant poison. It just doesn't seem safe at all, and and just this is probably one of the worst things I've seen in a store before. Anyone need some booger glasses? <laughs> now, I do actually have some history with this building. When I was a kid, this building was a Walden Books, and I used to come here to buy things like Nintendo Power and comic books. But now, unfortunately, some of the only books here now are things like these trashy romance novels and crappy spy books and stuff. And also, speaking of safety issues, while I was doing my research, I did notice that uh, Dollar General has been cited quite frequently for having blocked emergency exits. And if you notice, there's an emergency exit right there, and it's it's not blocked, but there's just crap all around it, and it's not a big door. So again, very claustrophobic, and that, that doesn't seem to be safe at all. See what I mean? It's just stuff all the all on the edges, and it just kind of funnels you to a tiny door. That can't be safe. Kind of feels like a Kmart mini in here. <laughs> These tall aisles are something that I've seen in every Dollar General store that I've been in, so it isn't unique to just this location, but again, it just adds to the really claustrophobic feeling, because they're narrow too, they're really tall, and then they're skinny. Here's their little uh, athletic section. This looks like stuff similar to like what they sell at Ross and, and places like that. They really do sell everything at these discount stores now. Now this toy section reminded me a lot of the uh, toy section at the grocery store when I was a little kid. A lot of the cheap, like, generic dinosaurs and army men, and we got some ninjas there. I'm surprised they still sell, like, the fake guns and the cap guns and stuff. And uh, whoopee cushions, but self-inflating now. It still works just the same, though, it sounds like. Surprisingly, this aisle is not trashed. You would think kids would trash this aisle. But this aisle, where you would expect adults to be shopping, is kind of trashed. There's product all over the floor and stuff. And surprisingly, none of the employees have picked any of this up. It doesn't look like this had just happened. It looks like it's been sitting here for a while. And then you've got these stocking carts all over the place, too, which just add to, like, tripping hazards and just more of a claustrophobic feeling. This was interesting too, let's take a closer look at this motor oil real quick. Now, I'm not a mechanic, but we were surprised to find that this uh, motor oil is well expired. It expired in April, it looks like. I don't know what the dangers are of using motor oil this expired, but that's not good. That's the uh, back room there, and we were going to take a peek, but we actually heard somebody in there. It really does suck to see uh, you know, a place that I did have happy childhood memories at when this is a Walden Books turned into a store that's just really trashed and dingy and not kept up at all. And how is this a big successful retailer? That's what I don't understand either. They make profits well over a billion dollars a year and they're killing a lot of other retailers but their stores look like this. It's always fun to look at the uh, cheap DVDs. This is a format that definitely seems to be going out. Look, you've got Bad Boys 1 and 2 for $5. That's $2.50 a movie. That's not bad for... I mean, I mean, they're crappy movies, but they're still fun to watch. Here's that old Thundercats series that nobody watched. I heard that was actually pretty good, though. There's a few more books over here, mostly magazines. And then back over here to the grocery area, this was something else that I found was interesting. I've never seen these Taco Bell kits before, but can it really be any cheaper buying the kit than just eating at Taco Bell? I wonder how much money you save preparing Taco Bell yourself. 
And also this, this expired the next day. This was one day from being expired. Now this was surprising too over in the Kool-Aid section, all the way up on the top shelf, I saw something that I hadn't seen since I was a kid and I didn't know they made anymore. But I remember taking these with my lunch to school in elementary school, this, these Mondo squeezer drinks. These came out I think the same time as like the Kool-Aid squeezer things and the squeeze it brands. Ah, zero, zero percent fruit juice. <laughs> That's Good job mom, <laughs> thanks for sending me to school with these. I, I had no idea they still made Mondo. That was kind of a trip to see. And somehow Starbucks has even wormed their way into this store. Again, I'm really surprised that this store belongs to, like, not only one of the biggest retailers, one of the biggest companies in the United States, a Fortune 500 company. It's completely surprising. There's also a good chance there's a Dollar General near you with as many stores as they have. They operate in all but a very small handful of states. So I, I pass the question on to you. Is, is this what the Dollar General stores look like in your area? This is what the ones around us seem to look like. Just stuff all over the place. And look, they keep their finest beer at the front of the store. Some good old Natty Ice. What is that? Natty Daddy? I've never even seen that before. I bet that's amazing. But you can see, even the front of the store is just super cluttered with stuff. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the uh, Dollar General stores. Thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey, thanks for checking out my video on Dollar General, the conundrum of a store. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also follow at the social media links there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.